with Overwatch 2 Season 11 dropping recently. We got a brand new season of ranked and a bunch of hero changes that actually shaked up the game a pretty decent amount. Whether they're good or they're bad, we're going to talk about them in this video. It's going to be the season 11 ranked hero tier list. If you guys missed my tier list for season 10 or even mid season 10, I actually did a mid season 10 tier list as well. I don't know how many of you guys have actually seen it because that video didn't get promoted to sub boxes or subscription feeds and didn't do as well as usual, but I will leave a link to that one at the end of the video if you guys missed the mid-season 10 tier list I did for the game. Don't know if I'll be doing a mid-season tier list for this patch, but uh, we're going to hop right into this. It's going to be the pretty much a ranked tier list for your solo queue players from your lower tiers. Like I say, like silver, mid-silver, high-tier silver, all the way up to like your mid-tier plat, low-tier diamond that in that area. Not for your pro players, not for your top 500 or champion tier ranked players. This is for your average player tier list. Keep that in mind. I'm also a console player. I don't know if it really matters that much, but I'm a Nintendo Switch player. So I'm also a tank player mainly. So keep that in mind as well if I do get as we do get into this. Uh, if, you, if I missed anything in this list, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys want to let me know, know your guys' own list, let me know down below as well. Leave a like, subscribe, share the video, we'll top right under this. I'll throw the list on screen for you guys right now. Uh, this is going to be the entire list. Keep in mind it's a new season, so we're going to go entirely re-rank re like everything from scratch. Unlike I think what I did for the mid-season list, I only re-ranked like some of the stuff that actually changed with the balance for the last mid-season patch. Brand new season, we got a bunch of balance changes. Um, I'm going to be real with you guys, I think the balance of the game right now is fucking awful. Seems like it's always a new issue with every single season. This past season 10, it was uh, the problem with having Malga and like Barisa run the entire game for like the first entire half of like the season and then they finally nerfed the shit out of Risa and then it became Malga and Ball running the game. So I, I really don't know, it's kind of the same thing for this because they never really changed those. Kind of a spoiler. But uh, we got the f free win tier. This is all the stuff that is the best of the best. There's no drawbacks, it's picking this every single game. It is the stuff that never got any balance changes or Stuff that like you can pretty much just win with every single game. S tier is your other really good stuff. A plus tier is your above average. A is average. B is below average. C is kind of more situational stuff. D tier is borderline useless. It's not like the the worst like unplayable stuff. Like it's not unplayable, but my gosh, it is probably the worst stuff in the entire game. There's little to no reason to playing anything in D tier at all currently. And you got the needs of reworked here, which is the heroes that I think need of some type of rework to either make them balanced or make it them easier to balance going forward, that type of thing. So there are a few of these heroes in this tier, which we'll be talking about like usual. So that is the entire list. Top right into this. We're going to be starting out with Malga. Malga's going right up into free win tier. Spoiler alert, Malga is the best tank in the entire game. Patch has been out for about like three, four days now, at least we're recording this. I've been playing a shit ton of ranks and casuals. Uh, who would have seen this one coming? If you guys even even watched my uh, patch notes breakdown of of the patch notes for this season a few days ago, I said, wow, there's no Malga changes in these patch notes. Malga, by default now, is the best tank in the entire game. And what happened? Now, now Malga is the best tank in the entire game. I think by far he's probably the best tank in the entire game. There's a few other ones that are like on his level. But I think overall, if you want to make a number one for the entire game right now, I think Malgus definitely number one tank in the entire game. The guy is unkillable. He just shreds damage. Like, he just does everything. He let the guy is just fucking crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm not going to talk about him very much because I went into a huge rant on him for the midseason patch, I think. So, not really much has changed since then. And I even predicted it since then. Like, once they nerf some of these other tanks or some of the stuff that's keeping a few things in check, Malga is going to be the best tank in the game again and what happened there it is so Again a, a person that is not even being paid by blizzard to balance the game And I am balancing the game better than people that are actually being paid to balance the game Kind of ironic how that works Tracer I think is still really good It comes down to the player though It really comes down to like whatever the player really is like I've, I've seen tracers in my games that either roll the lobby or like the tracers that is garbage if you're a decent adder, I think in low, your lower to mid-tier solo queue games, especially because a lot of your teams are more uncoordinated, I think she gets a lot more value. 
she like once you get higher in the in the ranks, I think especially like if you're like in a duo and above stacking with people, I think you need to have more teamwork with her. And especially if you're going against like other duos or up to five stacks, she doesn't really exploit the enemy team as as much. But like in your solo queue games, if you can play her really well, I think she's actually incredibly good. Just mainly because a lot of people are, are just solo queuing as well, and they're either not on comms or they're just really unorganized. They don't know how to play the game. Just mainly because solo queue, you don't have really as much communication. You can kind of exploit that, especially without if they don't want to like play to try to counter you or like try to take you down every single time. You can kind of just run the game and farm the enemy team without them really doing anything. That also opens up to it, like your rest of your team to start doing stuff too. So I don't know. It's she's kind of one of those heroes that's either really good or really bad. But at least from recently, from what I've seen with this season, I think she's on the better end of the. Spectrum current. I think she, the majority of the games I've been either playing her or seeing her, she's actually been doing really well. So we got Venture. Venture's going right to A tier. I think Venture is mid. I think she's like your definition of average. Like, there's some, if you're really good at her, like you can roll games. I think she really, the, the thing she really benefits is if you can actually play with your tank. But like in your lower to mid tier lobbies, especially if you're not in like a duo or like up to a five stack or that type of thing playing with people like your solo queue lobbies are so like like everybody just does their own thing so like she really benefits from playing with somebody like your tank or like around one of your supports having one of your supports just follow you around and kind of play with you or like playing with the tank and a lot of your solo queue lobbies your tank doesn't play with you or like you play with your tank but they end up being garbage and then they they flame you for getting them killed and that type of thing so that's kind of the thing she really likes to do if you're able to do that i think she does a lot more but if you're just trying to play her like by herself and do your own thing, I think there's a lot of better other stuff to kind of just play, at least for DPS. But she's not bad by any means. If you're really good at her, she can do really well. I think she's she's actually finally at the point where I think Venture is actually kind of balanced. I wouldn't say it. there's a few other like small balance changes they could do with her. There's a few annoying things that I don't really like about her, but I think overall, I think she's uh, compared to when she was on released, I think she's a lot more balanced than she was. So that's at least one good thing they did balance wise over the last like season or so and she's before she got released uh, we got doomfist doomfist is going right up to s tier doom is falling off a little bit just mainly because the main support you'd actually pair with doom is kiriko and the shit got nerfed out of kiriko this patch so like you're not able to support doom as well and that was one of the best pairings for doom there's also a few other things in the game that really aren't as good going into doom or at least got buff that are also good into him i still think it's incredibly good though if you know how to play Doom, like, you can just roll an enemy team. Like, he's, he's still incredibly good. And one of the best checks to Doom was Roadhog. And you can actually, like, duel him, and Roadhog got the absolute shit nerfed out of him now. Now he's probably down to being probably the worst tank in the game. Spoiler. So, like, you don't have to worry about Roadhog being any any of your lobbies anymore. So, that's also one plus. So, kind of one of those tanks that kind of got buffed, but that yet kind of nerfed with a few of the balance changes. I think he's S tier. I don't, just mainly because Malga also still kind of shits all over him. There's a few other tanks that just really just roll the guy, so... I don't know, he's still gonna be really good, though. Arisa got buffed, so another small buff, S tier. Not the best tank in the game, but man, is she really fucking good. I think what they're gonna do this next season, they're gonna end up buffing her again. I think she will be back to her, having Arisa be the best tank in the game again, probably for Season 12. We're supposed to have a new hero as well for Season 12, Space Ranger. We're supposed to be a new support. We haven't really got many details on that yet, but... We're also supposed to have a new hero that season, so I don't know, we'll see how that actually goes. But right now, our reason's still incredibly good. Incredibly, re really, really good. Reaper actually got some buffs this patch. I think he's still really bad. I think Reaper's still really bad, y'all. I want to put Reaper at B tier. Pretty much the exact same, I think, where I put him at, like, for the mid-season 10. They buffed him a little bit, they buffed the spread on a shotgun so his damage is a little bit more consistent, and they buffed the teleport time to make it a little bit faster. I think the main problem with Reaper is like he's just way too easy to kill, especially with his mobility. There's like really not much reason to really play him. The one thing he does is he shreds the tanks. I think he would actually be even lower on this list if Malga wasn't so good and there's a few other tanks that are really good that actually plays decently well into. But apart from that, like, there's just no reason to really play Reaper at all. I think if you're wanting to play, like, more of, like, a dive hero or, like, more of, like, a backline, like, like, disrupt enemy support or DPS, like, backline type hero, you're better off playing, like, Genji or even, like, Tracer or even Sombra. Like, there's just really no reason to play Reaper. 
And this is also coming from somebody like this. Reaper's my top, like, most played DPS for the last few seasons. And even this season, like, I've been struggling to make, make him work at all. The buffs they gave to him did not do anything to really help him at all. He's still just as bad as he was in Season 10. It's another... He, he's just mainly a victim of the... The changes like the, the tanks with not being able to take a much... Take as much, like, headshot damage. I think that's kind of the main problem. Ever since then, he's kind of really fallen off. I don't know, he used to be one of those... Like, the heroes in the game that just, like, pop stomp. Especially, like, your lower to mid-tier ranks. And even now, like... I, like, I'm not even scared if the enemy team goes Reaper most of the time. Because he just gets destroyed. Even his ult, like, his ult just gets checked by everybody. And another spoiler, too, is Reinhardt's really fucking good right now. If you don't really do shit to Reinhardt, you just kind of shoot at a shield the entire game. And every time you ult, he just drops a, a shatter on you. And you pretty much, your entire team just gets one-shotted and pretty much wiped. So, that's another check to Reaper that's incredibly good right now. That actually wasn't really as good as in the past, like, one or two seasons. And, uh, there's another reason why I don't think he's really as good, so that's one less tank as well that he's not really as good into. I just, I just think he needs some help. I really do think, I think Re Reaper needs some type of help. I, I suggested some, like, balance changes in, like, the patch notes video I did a few days ago on, like, Reaper, how to, like, some buffs I would change to him, but I don't, I don't think they'll ever do that type of stuff. I think he just needs some major changes to actually make him good, but he's still fun to play and everything, but, like, there's so many other better options. Ramatra is going right to S tier. Ramatra is actually really crazy right Ramatra now. Ramatra is actually really good. It's actually one of the only tanks that has a decent matchup into into Malga. Just mainly because you actually have pretty decent survivability. You have a shield. You have like everything you kind of really need to kind of go against some of the more other top tier tanks. You farm your ult incredibly fast. Your damage is really good. I think everything you want with Ramatra for a tank is what he has currently. I think he's just incredibly good. Not really going to talk about it very much, because not really much of them has really changed. But I think if you want a really solid tank that just does everything really well, I think Ramatra is what you're going to be looking at currently. Got a ball. Ball's going right up into into free win tier. This is another tank, not as good as Malga, but it's another tank that pretty much what you do with ball is you're pretty much unkillable. You may not do like an incredible amount of damage or stuff, anything, but like... You're going to be constantly alive and providing either alts for your team, just dumping minefield every single, like, every minute or two with how much ult charge you're going to get. Or you just run into the enemy team's back line, drop a pile driver, pop your shield, run away, go heal up, take a few health packs from the map, and then go back and either shoot at the enemy team's back line again or roll away or pile driver and repeat. That's all he really does. And you never die because of the amount of shields you get is absolutely fucking crazy. I am somebody that, like, first, I think it was for the start of Season 10. I forgot when they actually reworked them. I think it was Season 10 at the start. When they reworked Wrecking Ball and before they actually buffed him, I was like, if they buff Wrecking Ball, like, he's going to be with the best tank in the game. And then for the mid-season patch, they buffed the guy. They gave him some, some really significant buffs that he did not need at all. And now he's being the, back to being, like, one of the best tanks in the game. I, don't know. I, I really don't know where the like the balance philosophy is for the current balance team and how fucking stupid they are. Because you could have really seen that coming from like a mile away. Anybody could have. Even the people that don't even balance the game or barely even play the game. Which I'm assuming is also the devs. They don't even play their own game. So if you guys want to play Wrecking Ball, by far probably one of the best tanks in the game. Probably the most survivable tank in the entire game. Just never dies. Really difficult to lock them down. Unless you have, like, a Sombra constantly going after him. Or, like, something just chased him the entire game and trying to go after him. But you can, in most of your solo queue lobbies, you can't do that. Because your teams are a bunch of, bun like, brain-dead idiots that just stand around and do their own things. So that'll never happen in, like, a lot of your solo two ga tier games. Especially, like, your lower to mid-tier ranks. Got Reinhardt. Reinhardt's incredibly good. I wanted to actually put Reinhardt in free win tier. But I think I'm actually going to put Reinhardt at the top of S tier. I think this is probably the best Reinhardt's ever been. And the main thing that actually made Reinhardt incredibly good is Kiriko got nerfed. Kiriko now with their cleanse no longer actually cleanses hard knockdown effects. The main thing to his ult that would check his ult was Kiriko. Because you'd actually be able, if you didn't actually hit her with a shatter, she would be able to cleanse her team and make your ult pretty much irrelevant. I think out of every single tank in the entire game, I think Reinhardt probably has the best tank ultimate in the entire game now. 
every time you land a shatter, there is very little checks to a shatter now. That was the main check to, to Reinhardt's ult that would make it irrelevant, pretty much. The main thing that you actually have to, like, get rid of his ult is gone. What else really checks a Reinhardt ult now? That in, like, especially having, like, I think, like, a 2 or 2.5 second stun duration now. Pretty much every single time you land an Earth Shatter, you pretty much guarantee either, like, 1 or 2 kills minimum. If not, every single team fight, you pretty much just instantly win. It is the only tank in the entire game that has an ultimate now that has, has pretty much the the power and, like, the, the viability to pretty much win any single team fight. As long as you land it on, a, on at least one or two people. That's how fucking good it is. Not to mention he's also a lot, he's also really, really solid with how much damage he's currently doing. I know he's able to swing on so many stuff, so much stuff currently, especially like Malga being currently in the game too. You can kind of play around your shield and you just charge your ult over and over off stuff like Malga or Risa or Ramatra. There's a lot of stuff in the game that he's able to kind of really swing on, especially a lot of the other tanks. So like that's another thing that's kind of really going for him currently. But Kiriko getting nerfed into the ground this patch is probably the worst thing ever. It really is, because now every single game, at least when I'm going against Reinhardt, I've actually been struggling for the first time in the entirety of Overwatch 2 now. I've actually been struggling in some of my games to actually go against Reinhardt as a tank. It's either because I'm either shooting at a shield the entire game, or I'm constantly getting stunned non-stop by Earth Shatter, because he sh charges it so fucking fast, and it's, it just wins every single fight. I, think that's not, I don't think that's really a problem with Reinhardt, though. I think the main problem is they nerfed the shit out of Kiriko, which was one of the best checks to his ult. And the reason why now Reinhardt's so good is because his ult is the best in the game. On to the next one, we got uh, Kiriko. Talking, speaking of Kiriko, going down to B tier. Garbage. I think this is probably the lowest I think I've ever put Kiriko on a tier list. I, it really is. They nerfed the absolute shit out of her for Season 11. The, the main problem with Kiriko now is like she just doesn't really do anything. Like, you, her mobility got nerfed by another second, which may not seem like much, but having her swift step or whatever getting nerfed by another second for an extra cooldown, it, it's, it actually really sucks. It feels like shit to play. Kiriko does feel like shit to play this patch. Like, I don't know what it is. Well, I know what it is. They nerfed the shit out of her, but... Like, at least even me playing Kiriko, I don't play much support, but, like, I tried playing her just to see how she was. And, like, a few matches I played with her, she felt like absolute fucking shit to play. She feels like shit to play. I think the only thing she really has going for her is like her ult is really good. Like Kitsune Rush is probably like still one of the best alts in the entire game, apart from like a few of the tank alts and a few of the other ones. But like at least for support, it's probably one of the best ones. I think that's the only like main thing she really has going for her because like her damage is mid at best unless you're landing constant headshots, which for your average tier player really isn't and something you're going to be doing that much. Her healing really doesn't do anything, especially with the DPS cauterized passive. So, like, you're never going to really be healing that much unless they're constantly out of damage and you're able to heal them for full without the passive being in effect. Like, apart from that, what she really do? She has a cleanse, but now the cleanse got nerfed, so, like, the main thing you're using it for was a lot of the knockdowns, like Reinhardt and a few other things. That doesn't work anymore. So, I don't know. I mean, she's still good to, like, cleanse anti nade too, which is one other use I guess she kind of has, like, going into, like, enemy Ana, cleansing anti nade for your tank and your team, but, like, that, apart from, like, those two things, picking her for her ult and, like, for that, like, what does Kiriko really do? Like, she's oh, she has decent survivability, but, like, what else? Like, there's just so many other better supports to play now. I don't, I feel like she's just, feels like shit to play now. If I were Blizzard, like, going into meat season, I would actually revert every single nerf they gave her for this patch. Because she really wasn't even that broken to begin with. She was good, but, like, she wasn't, like, free win tier type support at all. So I don't know why they even nerfed her so badly. I, I can tell you why. It's because the pro players and the large content creators complained, like they always do about everything. I feel like she's shit to play. B tier. Probably the lowest I've probably put Kiriko in a long time. It's really sad, too, because she's, like, one of the only supports I actually play apart from, like, Ana, which is really sad. Another one of my main heroes that I actually play, again, getting nerfed into the ground to the point where they just either garbage to play or they just feel like shit to play. Widow's going into need a rework tier. I think Widow right now in the game is, especially in like your lower to mid tier games, is one of the most hit or miss heroes in the entire game. Either they roll the entire fucking lobby and they're the one, one of the most 
frustrating heroes to play against ever, or they just get shit on and they don't do nothing the entire time, and the guy that's playing the Widow refuses to fucking switch, and then we ended up getting rolled because we're going against two damage heroes on the enemy team, and we have one damage hero on my team that just can't carry everybody because you have dead weight. So, I think she needs, she's just way too inconsistent. They gotta lower the... Either, I don't know, I don't even know what they... I was gonna say they maybe lower the skill cap or, like, the skill ceiling on her, but, like... She's also a sniper, so I don't know how you really go about that. I do think she needs some type of rework, though. I would actually turn her, like, sniper rifle into, like, a projectile. I think that's what I would actually do. That's at least if I was balancing the game. I think change her from a hit scan into a projectile sniper, and maybe that'd be a lot better. With, like, fall off, maybe that'd be better. I don't know. That, that is an idea, though. Got Farah. I think Farah is really good. Especially in, like, your lower to mid-tier games. If you know what you're doing, like, if you're really good with Farah, you can just roll up. Like, I'm gonna put her, like, S-tier. I think she's really, really good. I think the main problem with her, though, at least for me, like, I can't play her for shit. I'm, I'm used to sitting in the air the entire time with, like, the old Farah before she got reworked. I can't play her for shit, but, like, if you can, like, adapt to how she currently plays with the rework recently and that type of thing. Like, she shits damage and everything. Like, she's crazy, but... I think the main problem is she's just really exploitable because you just can't be in the air the entire time. And if you're on the ground, you just lose to everything unless you're able to, like, hit non-stop directs on everything. And doing that, it's just... You can't really do that a lot of the time, especially if you're on the ground, everybody's focus is you, so... If you can play her really well, like, you can roll a lot of your games, but at the same time, you kind of need some team support still. You don't need a Mercy sitting and babysitting you, but, like... I don't, know, I, I don't think she's... I wouldn't put her in, like, free win tier, but man, she's, she's still really, really good. Comes down if you can play her, though. I'm gonna put her in S tier because I think she is that really good. Like, that good currently, but... I just don't see nearly enough people playing her. But every time I've played against her, she's been really good in a lot of my games, so... Got Mercy. I'm moving Mercy and needs a reworked tier. I say it every single tier list. Quit giving Mercy skins. Quit pandering to the Mercy players. Rework Mercy, change her res to her ultimate and give her some new abilities or something. Rework Blue Beam. I don't know. Maybe give her, make Blue Beam into like a reload thing to where you can like hit, attach it to somebody for like, and then like they give it like a duration where they're able to get like, I don't know, like free reloads or like unlimited ammo for like a short duration or something. I don't know. There's a bunch of other things they can do with her. A lot of cool ideas I've seen. Even like the last few videos, some people have actually commented some really interesting stuff, but I think she needs to be reworked. She's not, if you want to, like, not rework her, though, like, I'd probably put her, like, an A tier. I think she's just average at best currently. Torb, going right to A tier, your definition of average. I'm not going to talk about Torb. Not really much with Torb's really changed over the past few seasons. Just kind of your definition of average. Not really much has changed. Got Hanzo. I think Hanzo's still really, really good, especially being able to one-tap somebody, like, medium range. Still, still really, really good. A plus tier. Not as good as, like, some of the S-tier stuff, because you do get dove relatively easy, and there's a lot of shit that just dives on you and just deletes you. But she still can be really good versus a lot of the teams. Winston A-tier. I think he has a lot more potential now, because the main thing that also kind of did shut him down was McCree with Hindering Grenade. But let that also got reworked now, so you, have, you can play a little bit better. Yeah, that's one less thing you have to really worry about. So he's a, technically a little bit better, but I, there's just so many other easier-to-play tanks. Why would you ever play Winston? I have no idea at all. Got Zen. I think Zen's still really, really good. A-plus tier. The only problem with Zen is his healing's garbage, apart from his ult, and he just gets dove really easily. Apart from that, if he didn't have those two huge weaknesses, I think he'd probably be, like, one of the best supports in the game. Bastion going down to B tier. Situational at best. It's good for like tank busts and like he's really good into Mauga and like ball too if you don't get dove by the ball constantly. But like, apart from that, he doesn't really do that much. Got Sim. Sim actually got some buffs this patch. I think Sim's still probably one of the worst heroes in the entire game going down to D tier. If you guys want to know why, go back to my mid season 10 tier list. Go check that out because I go on a huge rant about Symmetra. The buffs they gave her did nothing. Still garbage. Zarya going to A tier. This is your most middle of the line average tank ever. Especially in 5v5s. I don't think Zarya will ever be meta. Like a full type meta unless they buff the shit out of her. Or like we go back to 6v6. Because she's one of those tanks that this is way better in 6v6. McCree got some rework slash nerfs. I still think he's incredibly good. 
I don't think he's like a free win tier, but gosh, McCree is still fucking great. They they nerfed they they kind of changed the hindering grenade back to flashbang, but it still gives kind of the same effects. And then they buffed his they kind of power shifted his alt, and then they nerfed the damage on fan the hammer. Still incredibly good. Still such a good DPS. You're gonna see him a lot. Got Soldier. I'm with Soldier in A tier. I think Soldier's like your definition of average currently as well. There's just so much shit that just dives Soldier. And the, and the main thing with him, I think he just gets out damaged by so much stuff. His damage just really isn't like most consistent, I think. I think if I, if I would actually buff his, I would actually buff his damage slightly by like one per pellet, I think. It'd be a solid buff for him. I feel like he's kind of lagging a little bit currently. Easy to play though. Like the main thing you're going to be picking Soldier for is mainly because for the easy, reliable damage and like the, the brain dead fucking aim, auto aim. Bot, pretty much alt. Lucio still really good. I don't, I'm sick of having Lucios in my games though that just do nothing but speed boost the entire time and just never heal. That's the one thing I'm really fucking sick of. I wish I, I would actually put Lucio into like needs a reworked here. I really would. But I don't think they'll ever rework Lucio because all the pro players and large content creators are all, and streamers will all complain. Oh, we got Roadhog going down to D tier. They nerfed the absolute shit out of Hog. Uh, if you guys know, I'm a, a prestige, I think, 83 or 84 Roadhog player on Switch. The majority of my powers on, are on Roadhog. They nerfed his DR down from 50 to 40, and they were nerfed to take a breather healing from 650 down to 600. What Hog does now is if you don't land every single hook and constantly get picks with your hook, you just fall over and die instantly. You throw a piece of paper at this guy, and he's fucking dead. Garbage. I think Hog right now, after the nerfs, they nerfed him into the fucking ground. By far the worst tank in the entire game. 100%. If less you land, like, every single one of your hooks. And the only reason I'm saying that is, like, because I can still maybe kind of make him work. But I'm also, I'm also a rank, like, 85 prestige Roadhog player, so... He's, only, he's like the only tank I actually can play, which really sucks for me because I'm stuck playing this fucking garbage tank now because it's the only one I can actually play. Meanwhile, everybody else is playing Mauga and Ball, so now I'm forced to play this garbage, lose almost every single one of my games, or struggle in a lot of my matches at the very least, versus like Mauga and Ball and a bunch of these other like crazy way better tanks. A Junkrat, I think Junkrat, I think the main problem with Junkrat is alt, is it's way too easy to destroy. One thing I would actually change with Junkrat is make his alt a little, give it more health or something, because I think the rip tire is way too easy to destroy with damage. Otherwise, he's like A-plus tier, though. He's, still, he's actually really good into stuff like Wrecking Ball, if you can actually land like a steel trap and get him caught inside your trap, or like into Maug and a lot of these other tanks that move really slow, even like Reinhardt, you can kind of spam down. Especially in like a lot of your more closed, like smaller maps, I think. Diva got some crazy buffs. I think she's really, really good. Going right up to S tier. If you guys haven't played Diva against Diva or like played with her this patch, uh, she just shits damage. They buff the spread on her, on her, I think her rifles or whatever, and then they buff the uh, the damage on her boosters or like the booster rocket damage. So. Now, if you actually use her explosive rockets against somebody, it does more, way more damage. She has way more damage now. Pretty much what she does is she just does more damage. She gets her all faster. That's and She's a lot more consistent. That's what pretty much what changed with her. Really, really good. If you guys want more of an aggressive, like, off tank, they kind of just dives the back line. Similar to, like, a Doomfist, kind of. Play D.Va. Really, really good. Got May. May is average. More team and comp and map dependent, but I, she, if you're really good at her, you can make her work, I guess. Genji's still really solid, A-plus tier, not with them, much of them to really changed. On is incredibly good. I think On right now is S tier. I wouldn't say she's free win tier, but I think she's probably one of the best sports in the game. Sombra's going up in that free win tier. Never got any type of nerfs. Probably the most annoying, broken DPS in the entire game, apart from one or two other ones, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Not one nerf for her at all this entire Season 10 patch notes, or at least the start of Season 10. Moira, A-plus tier. Just overall everything you really want out of the sport. Great damage, really solid heals, really solid alt. Does everything really well, but nothing like super crazy like some of the other stuff. Got Brig, I think Brig is A-tier, average. Kind of more comp dependent because if you don't have like a tank or someone like to fight with, 
or that nobody on your team fights with you, especially in a lot of your solo queue games. You kind of just get overwhelmed by the amount of damage currently in the game and like people that focus you. That's kind of the main problem I've been finding with her. Ash got a new mythic skin for this patch, but I think she's average. You're going to see a lot of Ash in your games just because she got a new mythic, but that I think she's just average. I think the main thing about her that's actually really good is Bob. Bob's just a really good old DPS ult. A Baptiste, incredibly good going up to S tier. Incredibly survivable, great damage, great heals. Nothing wasn't really changed. Sigma dropped off a little bit just maybe because there's so many other good tanks being played. I'm going to put him A plus tier though. I think he's still really good. Echo, I think, is still A plus tier. You can argue probably putting Echo up into S tier alongside Farah too because it's kind of whatever one you really want to play. They're both kind of similar in the similar vein, but. At least from what I've been seeing so far for seasons, and I've seen Farah do a lot better than Echo, so that's kind of where I'm going to keep her. Got Soldier, and going right up to free wind here. You know, they tried to balance Soldier in this patch, y'all, and what they actually did is they actually ended up buffing her. That is how fucking stupid the balance team is. So she's actually somehow even better than she was in Season 10, even though they tried to nerf her. Garbage. Garbage balance team. Hashtag terminate the balance team in the comments down below. Don't know how you fuck up that bad with balance changes. I have no idea. Junker Queen. Eight tier average. They gave her some small quality of life buffs. But I still think the main problem with Junker Queen is she just, she just gets overwhelmed by damage. Uh, she like she's good at close range. Like she can brawl a lot of stuff at close range. But like there's so many other tanks that just swing on her. Like Reinhardt just destroys her. Doomfist knocks the shit out of her. Bops her around the map. Like just makes a fucking toy out of her. Malga destroys you. You don't do shit to Malga at all. Wrecking Ball runs away or just pile drives onto you and just runs away every single time. You never actually do anything to him unless you can land like your your knife onto him and kind of pull him out of position. But like that usually doesn't work most of the time because if you're solo queuing, nobody follows up on it. So I don't know. I, I just don't think he's that good. And you have Soldier and still being really good, just bopping you across the map. There's just so many other stuff in the game. It's just just does so much damage to you, or like just you just don't really do much to, and that's the main problem with her. Then we got Life Weaver. I think Life Weaver is A plus tier. Nothing crazy, but nothing bad. I think the main reason why you're gonna be picking Life Weaver is mainly because he's really survivable. His heals are okay, really solid all. But like apart from that, nothing really is too crazy. And then we got Alari. Got buffed this pad. I think Alari. If you want like an AFK like. Not really takes much skill, but you get a lot of value support. I think you play Alari. I think Alari is incredibly good right now. Really good damage. Really, really good halt. Her, they buffed her turret, so that's one less thing you have to worry about. Makes her even more brain dead and easy to play because the turret does most of your job by healing your team, so you don't have to. That means you can just either do damage or just try to support your team in some other way half the time, and it's also a little bit more difficult to actually destroy your pylon because they buff the the health on her healing turret, so that doesn't it doesn't die as fast now. I think they buffed it a little bit more, so overall, really good. I think if you want a really easy support to play, I think if you're looking for like a really easy support to play in the game currently, it's a lot of value. You, can, you want to rank up really fast, just play Alari. I think by far, probably the easiest support to play that gets the most value, or like Baptiste currently. Those are the two best ones. You just want to rank up really fast without having to really like rely on your team that much because they both kind of play by them for themselves most of the time. Apart from that, that is the entire list, y'all. That is the entire list. I'm going to be real with you guys. I mean, you have a lot of stuff in A tier, which is in like A and A plus tier, which is where you kind of want the game to be. But you also have some shit that either needs to be reworked. You have some stuff that's pretty bad. Hogs garbage, Symmetra still garbage. I don't know. If I were them, I'd actually re revert all the hog nerfs going into mid season. I think if they over nerfed the guy. I would actually revert those. That's just me, though. I guess I may be biased because the only thing I play is hog mainly. So I only, the only other shit I really play is like Junker Queen and maybe Diva once in a while. Maybe Ramatra. But apart from that, overall, the balance of the game right now is garbage. Really, I like every single fucking tier list. Every single time I come on here, like, the, either the balance is really bad or it's god awful. I don't think the balance is as bad as, like, season 10 with, like, Risa running the entire game. 
But like you now, you instead of Arisa, pretty much what they did is like for this season, instead of Arisa running the game, now you have Mauga and Ball running the game. So you kind of just take you plug and play. You take one out, and then another one falls into position and takes its spot, pretty much. So it's kind of pick your poison every single fucking season. And they don't ba balance the game enough to where like they can prevent this type of stuff. I don't know how they didn't see like Mauga being the best tank in the game, especially like wrecking balls from this last season after buffing the shit out of him from mid season 10 how you didn't see that wrecking ball was gonna become like the best one of the best tanks in the game too right? i really don't know it's like they we have balance team that plays the game that at least says they play the game but in reality they don't barely play the game or they only play like with like play testing with like a like a little tiny dev team that does like internal like play tests they don't actually play test it with like actual players I don't know what the fuck they're doing over at Blizzard HQ, but I don't know, it's garbage. Overall, balance of the game really bad. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. There's a few things that are good, like a lot of the DPS. There's some DPS that are all kind of balanced. Like a majority of the game, there's some stuff that's mainly an A tier and A plus tier, which is overall good. But a lot of the tanks being in free win tier, and especially like the same shit from season 10, being half in like free win tier and being the best shit in the game again, still not that good. So. Overall, if I would have to give a grade for the balance for this season, at least for starting for season 11, I'd probably give like a D tier or like a, a D or maybe like a C minus garbage. That's kind of being generous though of like a C minus grade. No. Apart from that, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Leave a like, subscribe to the video. Got a bunch more stuff on the way. If you guys don't want to miss it, I also stream over here usually on Friday and Saturday nights. So if you guys don't want to miss that, subscribe. I also usually stream on Twitch once in a while. I'll link to that down below. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody.